In recent years, the Russian Premier League has become notorious for the continuous underperformance of its clubs on the European stage. Last season, not one Russian club made it past the group stages of a European competition, and this season has barely been an improvement. Of the four Russian clubs to make the group stages, only Krasnodar have managed to book their place in the knockout rounds. It was not always like this, however. In the not-so-distant past, Russian clubs not only managed to reach the latter stages of European competitions, but even won them outright. It was Moscow's army men who had the honour of writing their names in history as the first to achieve such a feat. This video will walk you down the winding path of Europe's unlikely conquerors, CSKA Moscow. After winning the Russian Premier League title in 2003, CSKA Moscow began their European campaign in the second qualifying round of the Champions League. Qualification saw them breeze past as airy champions in FG Baku before narrowly defeating a strong Rangers side in the final round and securing their place in the group stages of football's most prestigious club competition. In the Champions League, they were drawn in a group alongside reigning champions Porto, Jose Mourinho's Chelsea and Paris Saint-Germain. While such a fierce group would have seen many resign themselves to defeat, there would be no white flag waved by the army men as they picked up four points in their first two games, drawing to Porto away and then beating PSG 2-0 at home a fortnight later. These results excited both fans of the club and Russian fans in general, who were now all hopeful that the Moscow side would reach the last 16. Unfortunately, this excitement died out as quickly as it arose, with CSKA losing each of their next three games. But going into the final game week, CSKA still had a chance at reaching the last 16 of the tournament. But for them to do this, they would need to defeat PSG away from home and hope that Chelsea, who had already secured first place in the group, could beat Porto in Portugal. In the end, CSKA managed to beat PSG 3-1 thanks to a hat-trick from club captain Sergei Samak, but the result in Portugal was not as kind to them. This set of results saw CSKA finishing third in the group, failing to qualify for the round of 16. However, the European adventure was not over, as the army men looked to continue their European campaign in the UEFA Cup. Before kicking off in the UEFA Cup, CSKA saw two key players leave the club for their Champions League opponents. First to leave was captain Sergei Samak, moving to PSG, who had clearly been impressed by his performances against them in the previous months. He was followed by Yuri Jarosik, who moved to Chelsea for a fee of £10.8 million, a league record fee for a departure at the time. Already the underdogs for the round of 32 tie against Giovanni Trapattoni's Benfica, the loss of Semak and Jarosik only further decreased the chances of CSKA progressing in the tournament. Despite this, CSKA manager Valery Gazayev was confident, telling his players that if they could beat Benfica, they could make it all the way to the final. The motivational tactic worked, and CSKA stormed to a 2-0 win in the home leg, spurred on by the stellar performances of Brazilian duo Wagner Love and Daniel Carvalho. CSKA broke the deadlock in just the 12th minute of that game, as Carvalho whipped in a beautiful cross from a free kick to be guided in by a 21-year-old Vasily Berezutsky. In the second half, Wagner Love showed his ability as he secured the result with a classy left-footed finish past Benfica keeper Kim. CSKA brought the confidence from this result into the second leg, going 1-0 up after a well-placed finish from Sergei Ignashevic. Not 15 minutes later, Benfica equalised after a fumble from a fresh-faced Igor Akinfeyev, who was just 18 at the time. However, there was little which could knock Valery Gasayev's side off their stride, who went on to defend well for the rest of the game, seeing them through to the next round of the tournament. Next up in their list of opponents was a stubborn partisan Belgrade side who weren't going down without a fight. The first leg resulted in a 1-1 draw in Serbia, meaning it was all to play for a week later in Moscow. With progression to the next round on the line, the game was played on a knife edge, until the deadlock was finally broken. Once again, it was CSKA's Brazilians who stepped up. Daniel Carvalho scored the first goal of the match in the 68th minute, and later won a penalty which was converted by Wagner Love. The machine that was CSKA was well and truly firing, and the team knew they would need to keep this momentum if they were to fulfil Gazayev's dream of reaching the final. In the quarterfinals, CSKA were drawn against an experienced Ozer side, who had just knocked out Lille and European royalty Ajax. When the French side came to Moscow, however, they didn't look like themselves, and ended up losing 4-0, with goals for CSKA coming from Chidiodaya, Sergei Ignashevich, Wagner Love and Roland Guzev. In the return leg, Azer had nothing to lose, and decided to attack Azer's side from the off, but the Russians defended resolutely, and despite losing 2-0 on the night, were now just one tie away from the final. Interestingly, the semi-final was the one and only time in their European run where CSKA were the clear favourites to win. The semi-final tie saw CSKA pitted against the Parma side who had recently sold star players Adriano and Adrian Muto without replacing them and now found themselves battling to even remain in Serie A. In the first leg, Parma managed to save face in front of their fans, holding CSKA to a scoreless draw. In the return leg, however, Gazayev's side showed their class once again, completely outplaying the Italians. 
CSKA were driven by a man of the match performance from Daniel Carvalho once again, who scored two beautiful goals and assisted Vasily Berezutsky in the 3-0 win. Just as Gazayev predicted, CSKA had reached the final and were now just 90 minutes away from writing their names in Russian football history. The final would see the army men come face to face with Sporting Lisbon, and where better to host the final than the Portuguese side's new home ground, the Estadio José Alvalade. With the largely sporting supported crowd behind them, the Portuguese side dominated Gazayev's CSKA in the first half and went 1-0 up through Rogério's beautiful strike an hour into the game. Going into the second half, all the odds were against the Russian side, and the team knew it. It was clear that as the second half started they would need to take any chances they were given if they were going to turn this game around. Then, 10 minutes in, CSKA received a rare free kick on the side of Sporting's box. Daniel Carvalho whipped in the cross and saw Alex Berezutsky nip in front of his marker, heading the ball into the ground and past Sporting goalkeeper Ricardo. Game on. With a newfound sense of confidence and home fans in shock, the momentum shifted and CSKA looked like the team in the driving seat. Less than 10 minutes after the equaliser, Carvalho played Zhirkov through on goal and the Russian made no mistake, placing the ball through the keeper's legs and into the back of the net. 2-1 CSKA. All they had to do now was hold on to the lead, but this was easier said than done. After CSKA's devastating 1-2 combo, Sporting had dialed up the pressure and Russian fans were biting their nails. On one of the mounting Sporting attacks, Akinfeyev was only able to push away a long-range effort to the feet of Rodrigo Teo, who retrieved the ball and put in a driven cross towards Rogerio, finding himself open in the six-yard box. It seemed like all Rogerio had to do was stick out his foot and the game was level. But by what can only be described as a miracle, the ball hit off the Brazilian shin, ricocheted off the post and found its way into the hands of Igor Akinfeyev. While most would have used this opportunity to eat into the clock, the ever-aware Akinfeyev saw the opportunity for a counter-attack and launched the ball forward to Carvalho, who put in an inch-perfect low cross to Wagner Love, who rounded the keeper with ease and smashed the ball into the back of the net. 3-1 CSKA were now in a position that seemed almost impossible at half-time, and Sporting's hopes of victory on home soil were rapidly diminishing. Although the Portuguese side continued to attack in an attempt to keep themselves in the game, it was already too late. Despite Sporting's persistent pressure, CSKA had the lead and the confidence of soon-to-be champions. The army men saw out the rest of the game and became the first Russian team to conquer the European stage. When Gazayev had first stated that he could see his team reaching the final of the UEFA Cup, he was ridiculed by many. But now, he had not only backed up his vision, but gone a step further, forever riding his team into Russian football history. In addition to the UEFA Cup, CSKA had also won the Russian League and the Domestic Cup that season, which meant they became the first and only Russian team to win a treble. They had defied all expectations that were placed on them, and become part of football's most exclusive club in the process. Wagner Love went on to become the most prolific foreigner in Russian footballing history, whereas the likes of Zhirkov, the Berezutskys and Akinfeyev achieved legendary status over the course of their storied careers. In 2005, CSKA proved to the world that Russian teams were strong enough to compete at the European level and gave Russian fans a burning sense of pride, which would see them continue to be optimistic, even in the darkest days of Russian football. To this day, CSKA's achievements keep us believing that it's merely a matter of time before a Russian club conquers Europe again. If you enjoyed this video and are interested in more videos like this and weekly podcasts on Russian football, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel. RussianFootballNews.com is your number one destination for English coverage of Russian football.